Hi, I'm Chris from Glad Science, and I'm glad to see you. You've probably heard of quantum physics before. It has something to do with science, right? Right. In fact, quantum physics and the quantum theory was actually introduced in the year 1900 by Max Planck, who theorized that electromagnetic energy is quantized. In other words, energy exists in small packets, or units, called quanta, thus quantum physics. He discovered mathematically that the equation for this theorem is E is equal to HV. Thus, energy changes do not occur smoothly, but rather occur in small steps. And using this quantum theory introduced by Max Planck, Niels Bohr predicted that electrons orbit the nucleus at a fixed radii, kind of like planets orbiting the sun. As you can see in this very poorly drawn diagram, in the center you have your nucleus. Each energy level, designated by n equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, represents a row on the periodic table, which I did a video about a few weeks ago. Fittingly, there are seven known energy levels, called n equals 1 to 7, that corresponds with each of the seven periods on the periodic table. Now when an atom absorbs energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation, it jumps to a higher energy level. Let me demonstrate that. So as you can see in this diagram, you have an atom in the n equals 1 principal energy level. In the second illustration, you can see the atom absorbing electromagnetic radiation. In the third diagram, you see the atom has actually jumped to the n equals 2 principal energy level. In contrast, when the atom releases energy, it releases energy in the form of electromagnetic radiation. Now throughout the history of quantum theory, people like Niels Bohr and Max Planck have actually developed equations to explain this phenomena. Okay, so here's a principal equation in quantum theory. So you have delta E, or the change in energy, is equal to Planck's constant times the frequency of radiation equals Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength of the electromagnetic radiation. So let me go through and explain each unit. H is equal to Planck's constant, which is equal to 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th power joules times seconds. The frequency of radiation, which is measured in hertz, or seconds to the negative first power. C is the speed of light, or approximately 3 times 10 to the 8th power meters per second. That's really fast. And then you have lambda, which is equal to the wavelength, which is usually also recorded in nanometers. The interesting thing about the speed of light is that you can actually determine the frequency or the wavelength using the equation C is equal to nu, or the frequency of the radiation, times lambda. So if you know the speed of light and the frequency, you can determine the wavelength. If you know the wavelength and the speed of light, you can determine the frequency and vice versa. So thank you for checking us out, and I'm always glad to be of help.